a unclear purpose is the enemy of destiny. When you don't know your purpose in any area in life, dissatisfaction spreads like a cancer. The problem is when we lack purpose, we start to not feel powerful. You don't feel powerful, so you start looking for ways to feel powerful. You start feeling powerful in the world. You start trying to find power in, in a promotion, in business, in a relationship, in something that's unhealthy, um, a new job, a new spouse, a new house. You try to find something. You try to find purpose and power and likes, comments, and shares, and it's just not happening. I think that one of the craftiest seeds that the devil can sow is the lack of purpose. So we're starting our four-part mini-series on the power of purpose for the podcast. Welcome back to the Driven Entrepreneur pod Podcast. Easy for me to say. It's Matt Brownie. I think you know me. I'm also recording this episode live. This is part one of four called The Power of Purpose. The Power of Purpose. I just brought this message actually um, at our church leadership conference this last week, and I thought, what a great time to bring this out to my driven entrepreneurs out in, in, in our community here on the podcast. Last week, I talked about bringing Teaching Tuesdays back. So guess what? It's back, and it's back in a big way. So let's jump right in with the power of purpose. <laughs> Welcome to The Driven Entrepreneur, where we sit down with visionaries, trailblazers, and entrepreneurs, and discover why and how they do what they do. We'll get the backstory, plus plenty of life and business lessons along the way. Here's your host, Matt Browning. There's four parts to this. Uh, last week, I talked about the overview, and here's what we got. Number one. We're going to talk about today, right now, in, the, in a moment here, about the three types of purpose, three types of purpose and what they are, what the differences are, because here's the thing. If you don't feel like you have a strong purpose uh, in, in, in personal life, in business life, in relationship life, in spiritual life, literally in any area in life, in fact, if you feel like the purpose is waning or it's not strong or it's just not clear, you're going to find dissatisfaction. You're going to find yourself in this. We've all done it, man. You're going to find yourself in a rut. And ruts are dangerous. You know, ruts can lead to um, bad stuff. It can lead to bad choices, poor decisions. And, you know, it, it's like the worst, man. Like I find myself when I, when I'm in a season and by the way, I, I run into this too. That's why, that's why I'm bringing this right now. Cause I need it as much as anyone else does. Um, when you find yourself with now a strong purpose in an area, I find myself at least starting to get burned out really easy, really, really easy and getting tired faster. And when I'm burned out, what do I do? What do you do when you get burned out to fill up? You, you just, Come on, same thing everyone else is. You're scrolling on Facebook. As I record this, by the way, we're on our Facebook page right now um, at M. Browning and at Matt Browning. So you can find me on Facebook. If you're listening on the podcast, I record these episodes live the night before on Facebook. So here you go. Um, however, of course, if you're on Facebook right now, make sure you head over to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts and get the Driven Entrepreneur. Make sure you subscribe and download to that. Tomorrow morning, or whenever you're getting this, Tuesday morning, um, part one will be available on the podcast feed. And then I'm going to continue doing part two, three, and four on the podcast feed. So if this is interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. It's totally free, um, but it'll come to you once a week. You'll get each one of these four parts of purpose. So part number one is the three types of purpose. Part number two we'll do next week is where to find it if it's been gone. And in that, I'm talking a lot about seasonal purpose. I think that's a really interesting concept people don't talk about. I hear a lot of entrepreneurs say, I've, I found my purpose in my business. This is my purpose. My purpose is to help these people, to accomplish these tasks, to create this change in the world. And as beautiful as that is, I also think it's dangerous. And I've been doing this work in, in business and in personal life for a decade and a half, and I've seen a lot of people falling into struggle. And I think one of the most dangerous things about purpose is believing that it's permanent. So next week, we're going to talk about seasonal purpose and how purposes can actually change in different seasons of life. Part number three, we're going to talk about how to keep the momentum. So part three out of four is when you get your purpose back in an area or something and you're moving forward, how do you keep that momentum going so it doesn't drop off? Have you ever found yourself waning, right? You get your purpose rolling. You're like, all right, I feel momentum. I'm crushing it. I'm really doing well. But then it's like, how long does it last? So we'll talk all about how to make it last and how to keep the momentum. 
And then part four, one of the most important parts is how to bring people into your purpose. How do you cast a net wide enough that attracts the right people to to help you, to support you, um, whether it's cheering you on or whether it's being part of your vision, like volunteering or working with you, uh, whatever that capacity is. So that's what the four part mini series is. Look for that each and every week. Um, if you're new to the podcast, remember, we've just changed uh, formats. So I'm doing two episodes. That's two. Count them every single week. We do Teaching Tuesdays and Interview Fridays on the podcast feed. You can find it at mattbrawningpodcast.com. I'll put that in the comments for anyone on Facebook right now, just so it's a really easy place. Again, it's free. There's no opt-in or anything like that. There you go, mattbrawningpodcast.com. You just go there, and then there's a button right away, uh, and you can subscribe either on Apple Podcasts or you can subscribe on Google Play or Stitcher or Spotify, wherever you get the show. Um, there's also a feed right there on the website, so it's really easy. Again, Part one, I'm doing live on Facebook here and on the podcast feed. Part two, three, and four will be recorded just for the podcast feed. So if this is interesting to you, uh, make sure you head over and check it out and you get the episodes there every week. I also do interview Fridays in case you didn't know, just a quick update. We're still doing interview Fridays. So I have some great Whopper entrepreneur interviews with some really, really cool people coming out um, that I've just recorded in the last few weeks. I'm doing a few more fresh recordings uh, tomorrow, or no, a couple days, I guess, as this comes out, it'll be Wednesday this week with some great entrepreneurs. And those are going to come out every Friday where you hear the origin stories of some cool people. Anyway, let's get into it. Power of purpose. Here we go. Enough prelude to it. So three kinds of purpose. Purpose number one is higher purpose. Purpose number two is personal purpose. And purpose number three is a serving purpose. So you have higher purpose, personal purpose, and serving purpose. Let's break down each one because I think what I, what I find again is different areas of my life, number one, and different seasons or times of my life, number two, will carry different kinds of purposes. So let's say I'm in my relationship and I'm not feeling very purposeful. And my wife and I went through a season, uh, to be quite frank with you, where, you know, it's like we love each other and everything's wonderful, but we felt like it's like, where are we going? You know, like, what are we we're married and we've been together over a decade and this is wonderful. And we have our son and you know, it's like life's good and we're doing good things and we're serving. But when we looked at just the marriage itself and our family itself, we had to face the hard question of what's our actual purpose in our family life. What's our actual purpose of, you know, the, the brawning three as we, you know, we call it, what is this team brawning purpose? Why are we really here? So you can look at when you're trying to find a purpose in one area or it's in, you know, your personal health or in an area of your business, you want to look to one of three areas, higher, personal or serving. So let's talk about higher purpose first. So a lot of ways to have a higher purpose. Um, if you're faith minded or spiritual minded, pretty clearly purpose can be something simple like praying, reading the word, listening and, and saying, you know, hey, God, what do you have for me? Again, this can be how, whatever your belief system is, because I know I have people from all different backgrounds from all around the world that we're all connecting through this podcast and through Facebook. Um, so I want you to know that whatever your background is, you can lean into this. But it's really important that what's what what you believe for you, you lean into and you say, OK, so for me or I'm a Christian, so I'm going to lean into reading the Bible and I'm going to pray and I'm going to say, Jesus, what's my purpose or what's the purpose you have for me in my family in this season? So that's one way I tap into higher purpose. Other ways you can do that would be getting a bigger vision. Sometimes it's not necessarily about a spiritual quest or, you know, like, you know, a higher, like from a higher source. Sometimes it's higher, meaning it feels bigger than you. So bigger than you could be, well, like, again, in my family example, we're saying, okay, well, who are we all called to be as a family? And I mean, my family, like me, my wife and my son. What are we supposed to be doing together in the world? What are we going to do as a family in this next season? And here's one of the things we came to. And it was real <laughs> overly simple, but really important. You know, we went through a season where we were taking care of a lot of people. And we've had people living with us on and off for, for years, really. I think since Val was born um, and ever since then. So for the last eight years, we've usually had one or two people living with us at different times. And it's been amazing. We've been able to have people in from the church. We've had people moved 
from out of state and stay with us. We had uh, a friend stay after having a, a surgery for a few months. And we've always, we just had people staying with us over time. And we really love it. We enjoy it. But we felt like one of the higher purposes for our family in this new season when we moved to Michigan a year ago was to really spend time together and to build the three of us together and really build some security and, and confidence in Val and, you know, my, my son and, um, and really just like pour into like our family vision. So we've been doing things like having more family night, spending more time together, um, playing more board games, doing less electronics. Sometimes we do more electronics. I was just, we were playing Xbox this morning in the basement with Val and, and having a blast, you know? Um, but we were doing it together, if that makes sense. It wasn't like he went off and did something and then I went off and did something instead. It's like, let's do video games together. Let's do, we finally carved our Halloween pumpkins, right? If you, again, Halloween's in a couple of days. So we did that tonight. And it's just about doing something together and just being together. So that for us was a higher purpose. Now, what has it done? <laughs> it's cool for me, having a higher purpose in the family has really created like a momentum and a desire. When you have a higher purpose in an area in life, it creates a desire to spend more time in that area. And when you have a desire to spend more time in that area, it's easier to continue. <laughs> when you spend more time, it's easier to spend more time in the area. Uh, what else do we have? So that's higher purpose with uh, a bigger vision than you. It can also be cool things like, you know, you have a, um, a future vision. <clears throat> Excuse me. So maybe, you know, you're going, hey, um, in, in life and in business and relationship, you've gotten into a stagnant place where it's like you've been working off the past. You've been working with what has been and not what will be. Ooh, write that down. That's a good one. Write it on a whole page. Don't work with what has been. Work with what will be. When you start to infuse back in the what will be in life, that's where more purpose comes from, right? Really cool. See, Eric just said, spend time to spend time. Amen, man. Very good. That's exactly right. So you can find a higher purpose in a product, in a solution, uh, something, a new business, a new business partner, a new uh, program line. Like if you th think about this, if you're in business, you know, most of you are, uh, if you're listening to this. And you've been doing the same product or the same product line or the same seminar or the same coaching program or whatever for quite a while. Hey, number one, good on you, man. Kudos. I've had some programs that I've had for years and years. And I think it's really great that like it still works. And it's really great that you can keep the momentum going. But if you find yourself getting stale and it's like, oh, you just, you know, all of a sudden people become numbers. Or as, as some people say in the seminar world, you know, they become butts in seats. And it's like, all right, I just got to go speak at this place and get more people to come to my event. And when I get more people in the event, I sell my programs. And it's like, if you find yourself in that rut, just consider, you know, don't make new things for the sake of new things. Don't make programs for the sake of programs. But consider, could you, like, really go back to the drawing board? Go back to the well and say, why did I get into this in the first place? What did I want to do? You know, maybe you're a biologist and, and it's like you've been doing it for 12 years and and you just feel like, oh, yeah, just same old set. You're just in a rut, in a routine. Ask yourself this question. Why did I get into this business in the first place? Why did I become a biologist? And maybe your answer is, honestly, you know, I, I, I watched my, my loved one um, get sick and, and pass away from cancer and I wanted to find a cure and I wanted to get to work at it. Well, look, if that was your like your driving point what and, and i know it's more complicated and it's a longer process but like what stops you from saying you know what i'm gonna do the the things i have to do the month the kind of the day-to-day -day research but what stops me from just taking an extra hour and saying you know what i had this one hunch or this idea about this cell I, i'm not a biologist i don't even know where to begin but i have this idea and maybe let me follow it through a little bit you know, I, I've had this book in the back of my mind for a long time. You know how exciting it'll be? You know how purposeful you'll feel if in the middle of the day-to-day -day in the mundane, you said, I'm going to take Tuesday afternoon and let me just start writing some titles for my book. Because you know what? That's how it gets done. You write some titles and then you write a, a chapter, a chapter heading. And then, you know, before you know it, it doesn't, here's the thing. It doesn't even matter if you do the book. I mean, you should, it's probably better, but if you don't even finish it, it's like just working on something that's fresh, working on something that is bigger than you, working on something that is reminding you why you got into the work you did in the first place, that will rekindle a purpose. And sometimes that's what you needed to get out of the rut. And then you can rock and roll. And even if you get back to the quote mundane again, 
it's still like exciting and purposeful. So always consider where can you find purpose? All right, number two is personal purpose. So sometimes it's not about a big thing. Sometimes it's not about, you know, finding a cure for cancer or transforming the world. Those things are cool. And they have, certainly they have their place. Um, and it's amazing to devote your entire life to that. But sometimes what gives us purpose is actually not the big higher purpose. Sometimes it's a personal purpose. Sometimes it's about a personal goal, a change, a transformation, a new habit, breaking an old habit. So do you have a goal? You know, is it, uh, it could be a monetary goal. It could be a freedom of time goal. Um, it could be a getting out to get camping again goal. I'm telling you, you, you start getting mundane and, and purposeless and dissatisfied in life. It's amazing what a weekend of camping, will, shoot one night of camping I'll do for you. And trust me, I, I've been, I've been climb, climbing and camping and going on mountains for, oh gosh, 20 years. I started when I was 19. I'm 39 now. And there was a season when I did that a lot. As of late, I've been doing a lot less of it. Why? <laughs> Life's busy. And there's no mountains in Michigan. That's kind of a problem. <laughs> there's no mountains out here at all. The highest mountains, like a little tiny hill over a pond. It's, it's, it's very uh, unhelpful. But I'll tell you, like getting out and saying, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go camping for the night by yourself or with a friend or a loved one, just, you know, doing one thing, just going outside. But for me, it's like, I love that. And I love outdoors and I love nature. So going outside and being in nature, that could be a personal purpose, if that makes sense. And it gets back to something personal. It could be diet or fitness. You're feeling mundane, but look back in the week and just ask, you know, I'm, I'm look, I'm not here to convict anyone. I'm not telling you that you should change because you're not doing it right. <laughs> uh, but if you hear me on this, what if, I don't know, like look back at your diet for the last week and maybe it's been more fast food and more, you know, I don't know, like just like worse food than usual, or you've been drinking more pop or soda than usual or more alcohol or smoking more cigarettes, or I don't know, whatever the thing you do that you know is like not as good for you or is bad for you. Maybe you've been living more of that lifestyle. And if you are, it's like, again, I right, wrong. I don't, that's totally your call, man. That's your life. But sometimes what you, we need is you look back at your week and for you, if you say, this isn't who I am, man, I like, I don't eat that much fast food, but I eat fast food every day. That's not me. If that's what you see, changing that, having a personal purpose to transform and say, you know what? I'm done with that rubbish. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to get some fresh ingredients. I'm going to come home and I'm going to cook dinner. And just like, you know, that feeling, right? You know it. You cook that fresh dinner and you got fresh veggies on the grill or whatever, and you're eating that and you're eating clean. And it's like, that can be the catalyst that infuses a new personal purpose where now it's like, you go, oh, you feel better. And you're like, I'm not going to bed bloated and, and heartburn and this feels good. And then it makes you want to have a better breakfast. And then it kind of makes you want to like get up earlier because you slept better because you weren't digesting a bunch of Big Macs. And that, you know, and it's like in one thing rolls to the next. And before I know it, it's like, hey, that felt good. Um, and then you start thinking and you start Googling for gyms in the area. And all of a sudden you sign up for a gym and, or you go for a run or a walk. And it's just like, it's funny how when personal life can feel stagnant, don't try to change everything. But if you change one little thing, it can go to, to more and more things. We'll talk about that more in episode three out of four, part three, when we talk about keeping momentum about how the one thing can make a difference. All right. So that was something. Um, the other thing I was going to say is in personal is like cleaning things. I find shockingly, um, doing dishes, doing some laundry, cleaning the bathroom. Like there's nothing more defeating than having a nasty, stinky bathroom. And we don't have time for that. I have a maid and I'm successful and I'm this and I'm that, or I have no time because I'm so busy or I'm just lazy and I don't do it. I don't care what it is. There's something about the satisfaction of scrubbing a toilet or cleaning a counter or whatever it is, right? Like I love looking at the kitchen and it gets nasty and there's dishes all over the counter and it stocks up and, you know, it's like I'm gone for a day and look what happened. But I get there and it's just, I just start cleaning it up. I read one time that Jeff Bezos from Amazon and Bill Gates from Microsoft, I don't know if it's true for sure, but I read that they both do their own dishes or at least sometimes. And they both enjoy dishes because of the cleansing kind of meditative nature. So I was like, you know what? I took that on. So now I actually do the dishes in our home and I like it. It's nice to accomplish something in five minutes. I clean something. I make something beautiful again. It's like there's something about doing that makes me want to go do more stuff. 
So you could be cleaning something, building something, try building something for personal purpose. Some of the, the most productive business weeks of my life had been when I've been uh, out in the garage building something. I built, I remember when Val was a little baby or maybe 18 months or something, I built this little train table. You know, I saw like at the toy store, they had these little table, right? Little tabletop rectangular thing that would be about knee high and you could have a little toy train on it. Well, I never did get the train for it, but I built the table and, but it was a long project. It was like at least a month or two. And it was quite cool. I was really happy with it, really proud. I, you know, I built it and squared it up nice. And I, I learned, I made mistakes. And I, it was a thing where at night, instead of like grabbing a beer or grabbing, you know, a, a drink or candy or a dessert and sitting and watching TV, I was like, oh, okay, you know what? So I went out to the garage and I started working on this table. And it was like an hour at a time, you know, two hours at a time, a couple of nights a week. But I found that that really like got my juices flowing. I really got my purpose going. And it felt amazing. So um, even if you're not crafty, like I'm certainly not very crafty, but if you're not, you know, consider, could I try building something and give it a shot? You know, YouTube is a wonderful thing. There's, uh, you can learn just about anything. Uh, I just put a, a brand new dishwasher in and I don't know anything about plumbing, electricity or all that stuff, but it was kind of fun. But most importantly, when I got finished, I felt like, you know what? I am man. I can do anything. I make dishwasher clean, you know? <laughs> and after that, it was like, what else can I do? What else can I accomplish? All right. So that's two. So number one to recap is higher purpose. That's a place to look. A type of purpose is higher purpose. Number two is personal purpose. And number three is a serving purpose. So serving is pretty simple and straightforward. It's the fastest one. It's serving others. Um, giving, taking care of somebody, giving someone something. Here's the trick though. This is the secret here. I'll tell you, if you're on Facebook, I want you to lean in. Come here. Come here. Here's the secret. Get specific, not general specific. So say, who am I serving specifically? Who exactly do I want to take care of? It's not like I want to go help the kids or I want to serve at church, which is a wonderful thing. But even serving in church or volunteering in a nonprofit or going to the soup kitchen or whatever it is can feel great, but it can also become what? Like if there's no, if it doesn't feel like you have purpose in it and it keeps being the same and you're just kind of generally just serving, can't it sometimes feel draining? Do you ever get burned out or tired? Look, I'm the first to admit I've gotten burned out and tired serving and doing things that I love. You know, I love serving in church life. I love giving back. You know, I love taking care of people. I love putting out chair. You know, there was a season in our life when we were leading the church in Orange County that, man, we, you know, I brought the trailer two, three times a month and, and we set up chairs every morning and we, um, you know, put out the signs and the part, you know, we did like all the stuff that has to be done for church life. And if you've ever been part of this, you know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. And we did everything along with some of the other volunteers and we had a wonderful time. But there was also a time when, when that continues on, it can start to feel like it's just the same thing. And I hate to say it, but it can feel like it's purposeless. So here's how you remedy that. Instead of quitting and going, oh, you know what? This must not be my purpose anymore. This must not be fulfilling. I should quit serving and go do something else. That's the big X I'm doing on the video right now. If you're watching, don't do that. Don't quit. Instead, press into the specifics. Press into the specifics. Who am I serving? You know, are you like pressing and remember, hey, if it's church, like I'm doing this not for this person who wasn't grateful. I'm doing this for God. If it's in a nonprofit, it's not I'm trying to do this to get brownie points or to help the kids. It's no, I'm doing this because I met Tucker at summer camp and Tucker was nine years old and I connected with him. And I believe that the conversation we had mattered and I believe that he came away changed and different because of it. That's what's important. So remember who specifically you're taking care of and press into helping someone meet, meet someone younger than you in, in your workplace or newer than you and say, Hey, I don't know if you ever want to grab a coffee before work or, or go to lunch, but you know, I, I've been around here for a while and I, I, I'd love to, I don't know, tap in, share some things with you, share some wisdom, or if you ever want to pick my brain on stuff, you know, I'm, I'm available. That kind of stuff actually goes a long way. And it's surprising 
how purposeful we can feel when mentoring someone, when someone who's younger or newer at something than us comes along hungry and says, hey, how does this work? Or I want to get better. It's surprisingly very, very uh, fruitful. Uh, well, not surprisingly, but it's like, we I don't know, sometimes I think we just don't realize how powerful serving can be. So those are the three types of purpose you can look for. Again, higher purpose, personal purpose, or serving purpose. Let me know if you're watching this live. Feel free to comment below if you're watching right now. I'd love to hear how you feel about this, if you believe it, if you don't, if you, uh, which of your purposes have you found, higher personal or serving purpose, anything at all you want to say about purpose, I'd love to hear. Remember, uh, tune in next week. That was episode one of four for the mini series, The Power of Purpose. The next three episodes should be a little bit shorter than this one. This one's going about 25 or so minutes. Episode two, remember next Tuesday, it was going to be where to find purpose if it's been gone. Uh, if it's been gone, where to find it and how to look for it. Week number three is how to keep the momentum going once you get it. And week four is how to bring other people into your purpose that you found in your life and your business, etc. That's the four-part mini-series. Looking forward to more Teaching Tuesdays with you on the Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. Remember, every Tuesday, Teaching Tuesdays, just me just talking to you and bringing some, hopefully, some nuggets of wisdom, some ideas. I've been living life for four decades, and I've been um, all across the world doing leadership work in business and church life and personal life, and I've... I've learned and seen a lot of interesting things. So I just try to share the best of my ability from my heart uh, for you. With that said, remember every Friday is an interview Friday with a successful and awesome entrepreneur. So let's see. I'm just going to pull up real quick and see who are. Stick with me for one sec. We're going to see who our interview is for this Friday. I believe. Oh, this one's. Oh, this is going to be great. This is so bomb. This is Mike Hambright this Friday. Mike is a real estate entrepreneur, and this guy, and he has been flipping houses and renting houses out. His first year, you'll love the story, Mike Hambright, his first uh, year deciding to, he made the decision, my wife and I are going to be real estate investors. His first year, they flipped 65 houses, and now he, he owns hundreds and hundreds of units. He's flipped, I think, a thousand or a couple thousand places. The guy is on fire, and he has some really, really cool strategies, and we just talk about kind of the business of real estate investing and what that's like as an entrepreneur. You hear a lot of his origin story. So anyway, that's coming out this Friday. So make sure you stay subscribed uh, on whatever platform you want. Driven Entrepreneur, I think I've plugged that enough. I just want to make sure that, hey, now that I'm coming back on these live teaching Tuesdays every single week, you're going to get a lot of me. I won't do everyone on Facebook. Some people say, I love your podcast, Matt. I watch you on Facebook. That's not the podcast but I am recording the podcast live on Facebook. So if you love that, I, 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 I'm so glad you do. Make sure you go over to wherever you get podcasts and search The Driven Entrepreneur or search for my name, Matt Browning, um, and grab it. If you are already on there, of course, make sure you find me on Facebook, at Matt Browning, uh, also at M Browning. I have a profile and a page. Anyway, just go to them all. Uh, Instagram at Matt Browning, and you can uh, you can follow me there. And the next time I go live for episodes, oftentimes Monday nights, you can join me live, ask questions, whatever you want to do. I am here for you. Love you guys. I'm for you. So excited for this new season. So excited for what you have up your sleeves in your purpose. And we'll see you Friday with Mike Hambright uh, on real estate investing entrepreneurship. And next Tuesday for part two, the power of purpose. Remember, Get out this week and crush it.